Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's have a look at the biggest new feature in Adobe Premiere Pro. That's AI Generative Extend. All right, if you've been watching things like uh, Firefly by Adobe, you know that they've started to introduce generating video. And the results went from kind of scary to a whole lot better. And now the whole lot better is inside Adobe Premiere Pro in Generative Extend. So we can take a clip and extend it. If you've ever tr wanted to add a transition, but you didn't have enough frames, you can now generate new real frames and um, put a transition in there or uh, add a little breathing room to a clip audio and video. I'll, I'll show you the requirements uh, and some of the restrictions in formats in a second. But let's look at, I've got four tests and we'll do a fifth test live so you can see, because these take a few minutes to do. The, all of these clips are 4K. So let's have a look at this clip. You can see at the end, there's a badge telling me what was AI generated. So I've added a bit more on this clip. If I right click on the badge, I can generate again, revert to the original, um, and set whether this is good or poor output. And you'll also see a little badge in the clips that you're working on. So when you generate an extension, to make it easier to work with, it keeps your original, it uh, creates the extension, and then creates a new kind of a compound clip uh, that looks and acts and works more like a one clip. It's easier to, to uh, generate. Uh, and work with and cut. So that's what you're seeing right here. So I'm gonna go to full screen and play this. And I picked something hard, fire. Boom. Could you see the difference? I couldn't. Boom. So right around here, that's where the AI takes over. Typical of AI generation organic stuff, it does a really good job of. Let's go to this next one, which is faces. Oh boy, faces can be very difficult for AI to uh, work with. So let's go full screen and see again if you can recognize where the AI is. Boom, I'll go to the end, go backwards. That's original, that's AI, original AI. So in this example, really good job. It keeps that blurriness, the blurry quality of that clip you can't tell the difference. I don't see a shift in color at all and brightness. It works great. Let's look at this example. Now this one, I also extended the audio. Um, I also added the footsteps. These sound effects, Foley footsteps, I added. So um, I didn't extend those, I generated those. But this um, natural background was uh, part of the clip and it's extended. So let's have a listen and look at that one. Pretty good, okay. One thing you'll notice if you put some, if you're listening to this through headphones, um, you will notice that the original audio uh, natural environment is very wide and the AI generated version of it is very narrow. So this example, you probably couldn't hear that if you're just listening on laptops or uh, other kinds of speakers. The video looks pretty darn good. I chose what I thought was a, a little bit of a difficult uh, clip for it to uh, handle, but it did a really good job. The only thing you will notice is a sharpness that happens. You can see that on the leaves in the bottom right here. It tends to sharpen. The other thing is, notice the pattern on the back of her neck that, uh, scarf she's wearing, it just moves a little bit. 
but all in all, a pretty good job. So far, so good. Um, for your main shot, you can use it definitely for a lot of B-roll. It's going to work. Now I chose clips that I knew Generative Extend and all AI would have trouble with, and that's geometric shapes um, and, and very specific things. And there's another example coming up with text. So let's have a look at this one and see. So if I go back to the beginning, there she is. She's on her skateboard and whoa, what happened to her face? Yikes. Now we've got some hallucinations. That's what she looks like. But AI did not like that and now we're in uh, some crazy mode. You'll also notice her hair. Watch her hair when she passes right there, when she passes the uh, um, umbrella right there. So the red in the umbrella and the red in the hair uh, had a problem. Also, look at this car over on the left. It starts to turn into particles and separate. Yikes. So I knew it would have trouble with this. Um, I had about a 5% chance in my head where I thought, eh, let's give it a, a shot and see what it did. So it failed. I could right click on it if I want and generate it again. Instead, I'm gonna to go to test number five. And this I picked again to give it a hard example with things like text, this text here um, and the, the people, it's, it usually doesn't get um, that correct. So how do you actually do this? Over on the left in your toolbar in the bottom, this is the new generative extend tool and it shows you right there, two seconds for video, 10 seconds uh, for audio or two seconds for both. We just have video here. So I'll click on the end and drag and, and it stops at a certain point. Now, if I mouse over, if I move the playhead, you can see it's telling me it's generating that. If you go to the top right, there's a progress dashboard. And if you open that up, twirl that down, you can see what it's doing. So I did a test earlier, it's doing another one now. And these are all 4K clips. And the first thing it's doing is uploading. And my upload here um, is, uh, it's only 100 megabits up. So this does have to upload the clip to Adobe's Firefly uh, servers because that's where the magic happens. You don't want this to have be happening on your local machine because it would take forever, especially on a 4K clip. 4K clip. Got to remember that Adobe is using an army of uh, servers and GPUs that are crunching all of this at enormous uh, speed. Um, and that's why we don't even have an option to do this locally because they would have to give you two options. One, take hours and be as accurate as the cloud or be quick and be really bad. So we don't want either of those. That's why we're sending this to um, uh, Firefly. It's generating now. I'll speed this up so that you don't have to wait to, to watch this. Now, it's generating a new file. You can see it's right here. Currently, it's H.264 or WAV files. Um, and there it is, it's generated. And I wanna show you in the file menu, project settings, scratch disks, captured and generated. This is where um, the generated clips are. You have a choice of where that is. So let's go have a look at this result. I'll set an in and an out point here. And we'll loop this around. So I'll play this back and let's see. Remember, I could redo this if I wanted to, but you can definitely see some odd, watch this guy walking here. All of a sudden he starts doing a bit of a, tap dance. Also, we have some artifacts showing up in here. The text on the, the uh, building, the text over here. I just go back. You can see it doesn't get text very well. Again, I wanted to give it a very hard to do geometric um, example and 
In the edit menu on Windows, the Premiere Pro menu on the Mac, AI models. Here you can learn about the Adobe AI models and user guidelines. I'm gonna show you the requirements in a second, but I wanna stop and mention, remember Adobe doesn't use uh, unlicensed media like some other AI generated companies who just take everything. That's your stuff, my stuff, everybody's stuff. That's not what Adobe does. I'll put a link in the description for more information of uh, the, uh, uh, what Adobe's guidelines are for their own generating of AI. Um, okay, so let's look at, at, at um, some requirements. So it, it makes um, horizontal or vertical HD, horizontal vertical part HD, horizontal vertical uh, 4K, horizontal vertical DCI 4K, only 12 to 30 frames per second. So no high speed footage, it will, it just won't work. Only 8 bit uh, SDR, no HDR at this point. No speed changes. So if a clip has been changed to the speed, either a ramp or overall speed, it's going to fail. You have to render that out and then uh, extend that. Start or end of the clip, not both. And, and it doesn't have to be the media end. I could trim it and then extend it if I want. Uh, but you can you choose either or. And don't think that you can grab one clip and one clip and then generate the middle part. It's not going to do that yet anyway. No spoken dialogue, no music, and no 5.1. So currently those are the restrictions. Everything generated, like I said, is H.264 and WAV files. I could see Adobe offering other formats in the future, like maybe ProRes uh, 422 or something at a higher quality, but that's the way we are right now. I think Adobe's got something really smart, really great that a lot of people can use. I know a lot of people I talk to are starting to use this generative extend in their projects. Hey, if you're new to video review and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to show you some of the new and cool, amazing stuff that Adobe is creating to make our videos even more amazing.